So the question in front of us is how do we control the start point of a multi-axis pocketing toolpath? So for anyone who hasn't used pocketing before, I know I've got a few more videos on this. There's a lot of them out there. Um, if you want a more general explanation, the in-house solutions training suite does a great job. But you know, basically what the toolpath does is it looks at the floor surface that you give it of a, a multi-axis shape and it tries to generate a roughing toolpath. So what I have here is just a very simple floor that's about 170 degrees worth of sweep. And I'm gonna put a multi-axis pocketing toolpath on that. So let's go in here. Now I'm gonna reset this to toolpath defaults, um, just so that way, you know, let me get rid of this ball mill that I created. Just that way I've got everything standard. Just using a standard ball mill, um, default holder, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna tell it stock and I'm gonna say cut pattern. What am I cutting? This entire part. And what is my floor? This is my floor, and that's what it needs in order to orient to the normal. And because this is roughing, let's just give it, you know, 10 thou stock to leave, whatever, and cut tolerance of, I don't know, 3 thou, max step over, let's do 125 thou. And, you know, I don't want this to take too long to generate. Over here on the depth step, I'm just gonna tell this to do one inch depth of cut per pass. Um, on the stock page, uh, oh, I've already turned that off, I'm sorry and everything else should be fine to leave, you know, to leave it all. Let's hit green check and generate that toolpath. Now you see it didn't take too terribly long to generate, but um, obviously I need a little more stock to leave on my lead in here, you know, a little more height, but basically it's gonna helix into the middle and, you know, generate out. Now the question is how do we control the start point of this toolpath because this toolpath unfortunately does not have a start point control and it will in general try to split the difference most of the time um, so that way it can have an equal amount of roughing back and forth but the problem here is that it's inefficient uh, to start in the middle and work left and right so one thing you could do this toolpath is very very stock aware so you could give it a stock position that will um, you know encourage it to drop in. So you'll see here in the, the file that I'll attach to this video, um, in the stock model page, I created just a very, very simple Helix board toolpath. Um, I literally just created a line, which of course can't see under the toolpath, just created a line, did a five axis Helix board. It's about 10 degrees. If you look at it from the front, it's about 10 degrees off of, you know, off center. But so it's a five axis Helix board just align to here and spiral down. Now, the important thing is if you look at the cut parameters here, um, I told it to do three quarter of an inch helix down. So the reason for that is because now I can make a stock model that shows that hole right there and my pocketing toolpath, everything should be identical to that first one, um, but I told it on the stock page to look at this initial stock model. And because of that, now it knows it can drop in there and just start cutting. So we're gonna cut out that and then we'll just do this all as one big peel all the way across. So unfortunately, that is the only way that I know of to enforce a start point, but it is nice that it is very intelligent and will drop right in. Just the, actually, it's a lot like using OptiRough or the dynamic mill toolpath, where if you give it an open air area, either in the stock model or by selecting open air, it'll, uh, it'll generate that. So there you go. Uh, hope this helps.